Hi, Mike. I'm Roger. <laughs> Hi, Roger. I'm Mike. You take her away, boss. Okay. This is so exciting for me. Um, I've been playing in a heart tribute band for like five years, and you know the the most obvious tune everybody wants to hear is Barracuda. And so I thought I would choose that one if you could walk me through it and make sure I'm getting some details right. And I just love to show people that even if you think you know a song, there's a lot of details still missing usually, you know. Right. So <clears throat> we could look at this uh, in terms of all those details and subtleties in the songs that are uh, probably really interesting that a lot of people might not know. But before we did that, I think we would want to know how to capture the spirit of the song. There's angst in the guitar part. In the context of Barracuda, there's angst in the guitar part. But as a standalone thing, when we jammed it out in some coliseum somewhere in the Midwest or something, it was just fun, just rocking, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting down, but if I were standing, it would be a more clear demonstration. <laughs> Just doing that uh, is really fun. So me and Mike DeRoge are just... You know, just having fun jamming. My brother comes running up to the stage and he says, what's that? Uh, we're just jamming, you know. If he hadn't come up and you know, said something about it, we just would have gone on and it would have gone away, like so many things do. Yeah. But he said, y you should write a song around that. So we said, okay, so then we just kept dinking around. Yeah, yeah, that sounds, sounds mean, so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the secrets of heart is that we played very cleanly and succinctly, all aware that the more silence is that's in your part, you'll be able to hear other things. So anyway, so just jamming around. And so then we came up with this lick. Mike recorded it on cassette and he had it. And a few days later, uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, we ended up getting fired from this nightclub. The, 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 the long story will be in our book, Bros, that Mike and I are writing, do a oh, lot of biography. Cool. Really going to be really interesting. Nice. But Anne was freaked out by us getting fired from this place and really sad and angry. And uh, so Mike gave her the cassette and he said, listen to this, you know, take your frustration and anger out through a song. And she, she wrote Barracuda. It was that that brought the angst to the guitar part because once you know the story of the song, mm -hmm. then you're, you know, you've got some angst, you know. And I always just, uh, and when you sweep that chord, you can uh, let the pick touch the string, and then right after the pick touches the string, it touches your flesh, mm -hmm. so, and then right over the third pickup, so you get wow. those harmonics. Yeah. That's cool. I'm going to have to practice that pinch harmonic sweep thing. That's crazy. Yeah. I do that a lot. Can I steal so, that? Can I steal that from you, Roger? Absolutely. Thank steal you. everything you want. <laughs> right. So, uh, any questions? Yeah, I like what you said about not doing exactly the same thing. Whenever we play like Devil Delight, I like to go off on the solo a little bit differently every time. And uh, with Barracuda, I try to keep it close because everybody knows that song so well that I try to keep it close. But um, I'm getting a lot of great details already. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Some things. I mean, it is a composition, so some things, of course, need to adhere to the composition. Sure. This yeah. part, Roger, when you did this part, I go like this, I go. But you did like a type thing. Yeah. How does that go? You, you, 
you could do it that way, but. I don't even notice that I do this. That's probably the most, I, I concentrate the most on that part, I think, throughout the entire night. That's the part where I really am trying to hit every note perfect, you know? I know, me too. It's it's a challenging little thing. Right, so that's just uh, adding some rhythm and, you know, a, a different uh, perspective of that chord without getting in the way. So, right. And then it also, these kinds of things give it a signature sound where you're doing something that other guitars wouldn't do. And you do do that often enough, and pretty soon it doesn't sound like anybody but you. Oh, I never did that. Oop. Yeah. Okay. You know. Tight is only half-sided if you're not being tight with the cutoff points. Mm -hmm. When you're tight with the attack and the cutoff, then the band feels solid. Close? Yeah. Okay. But uh, what, what I do is... Uh, Oops. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you get like a reverse rake traction in there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's so fun to do the live in concert. It just, it looks cool. It feels cool. Yeah, and you're paying tribute to uh, arguably the greatest uh, instrumental rock group of all time, The Ventures. Ventures, yeah. Where they would go. <laughs> Just the other way. <laughs> uh, I always do the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this would be really cool if a bunch of your listeners did this. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that D, after that go. So yeah. It's really uh, fun. So is it like? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun yep, exercise, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then the link is. When I'm playing live, I can put so much emotion in. Bottom line is put your heart and soul and guts into this thing when you play it so it comes alive and it feeds the audience with energy. You're going to you're going to give them energy. I'm working on a music instruction platform called Beyond Guitar and uh, I've been working on it since mid '60s, I guess. Wow. Uh, just trying to foster. Uh, it's kind of like planting a seed, and then nurturing it, and cultivating it, and all these years later, I'm still trying to find the thing to pass on with my teaching mm -hmm. that is needed. In other words, nobody else is doing this, so this is what I'm going to do. And uh, we put so much importance in tuning the instrument before we play. But before we play the instrument, we need to tune this. 
And so I spend my whole life uh, stretching and not working out seriously with, with weights and all that stuff, mm -hmm. but doing things so that uh, I'm healthy and uh, to be able to create a context for your uh, creativity to come out and be effective, uh, you've got to have a vehicle. And depending on what your vision for what energy and creation is, uh, your vehicle might need to be fairly well tuned and uh, ready and able to do this thing. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about this book because I think what a lot of guitarists need these days is the opposite of what's happening, which is a lot of robotic type playing, and it really feels like it's not coming from a human. And it feels like what yeah. you're saying is going to help people get that side out. Well, you are very, uh, you have great insight, Mike. You really get it. Thank you. A um, lot of studying and failing, and then uh, finally you get to a point where you think you know something and then you fall again. It's a lot of just getting back up, you know? Well, yeah. thank you so much, Roger. This is an honor for me, you know, being in a heart tribute band, learning a lot of your licks, and finally getting able to talk with you and jam with you. It's huge. Appreciate everything. Thanks, Mike. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.